Welcome to the Be Smart About Art podcast, delivered by yours truly, Susan J. Mumford. This episode provides insight into the relationship between artists and agents with a focus on directing sales through the appropriate party at the right time. Enjoy. An art collector named Warren was on the mailing list of an online gallery. One day he spotted a painting that he adored by an artist he didn't recognize. Unfortunately for Warren, the piece was already sold, so he ended up looking up the artist's own website and made contact. While absolutely delighted that a collector had gotten in touch, the artist proceeded to sell Warren several originals, as well as create a set of limited edition prints inspired by Warren. All good news? Well, not quite. In this particular scenario, I have a big concern. That is, if it wasn't for that online gallery, how would the artist have otherwise ever gotten in front of that collector? Well, the reason I say that is because Warren had discovered the artist owing to the online gallery, and specifically that newsletter that they had sent that arrived into his inbox. Well, such third-party representatives benefit artists by bringing together a group of makers with complementary sensibilities, and in turn then getting those artists in front of potential buyers. Such entities, like that gallery, establish a reputation, ideally, for finding worthy creatives to champion, and then under one roof, including bricks and mortar, online, pop-up, what have you, providing a go-to place for collectors to find the next artist champion. So this brings up an essential question that any represented artist, and it doesn't mean exclusive representation, an artist working kind of closely with some galleries should ask when contacted by a potential new client. How did you discover me? Should it turn out that the collector found you via a gallery, best practice is certainly to direct the sell back through that representing business. Whilst it's true that you'll forfeit some commission, which can be viewed as a marketing and sales cost long term, the gallery's ongoing exposure of your work to a wide audience of buyers, critics, and so on, will deliver you a number of warrants, not to mention noticeability by art critics, amongst others. Now, this isn't to say that represented artists shouldn't engage with collectors. It's, that's not the case whatsoever. Makers and buyers can certainly get to know each other, the relationship of which is then founded on art and not the transaction that is not the money, as the financial relationship is left to the agent, the gallerist. And from a sales negotiation perspective, a third party such as an agent is often more effective in selling as high at as high a price as possible on behalf of the artist. For many artists selling their own pieces, find it a challenge to deal with collectors who ask for discount, discounts. Take, for example, this question. Well, if they're asking for a discount, is my piece really worth what I was asking anyway? I mean, it brings to mind stories that I certainly hear on, a, on an ongoing basis about collectors trying to get 50% discounts when buying directly from the artist, which is just outrageous. If you quietly sell to collectors for less than the normal asking price, this can adversely impact the perceived market value of your pieces. So it's important that you maintain those prices. The takeaway then, will respond to sales inquiries with a long-term perspective in mind. This helps to keep your collaborative partner in business, whose business it is to promote you on your behalf, therefore enabling your pieces to sell at increasing market values while you have more time to do what you love, and that is creating art. Sound good? Fantastic. Thank you very much for listening as ever. Stay tuned for future episodes and be sure to browse previous editions. At Be Smart About Art, we're here to help you thrive in a changing art world. Art is your life. Make it your living.